Hello everybody, Rebels of Cloud 9 here. Hope you guys are doing well and thank you for watching this video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my demonstration of how I make seat belts for my models. Now I have a very basic way of doing this and I have a bit of more advanced way of doing this. Now I'm not saying this is the way how to make seat belts. As I mentioned before, I'm simply stating this is how I make seat belts for my models. So. Over here I have one in 70 second scale, very simple 70 second scale seat and I'll run through what I do for those. And then I have here 48 scale seat and it's a bit more advanced, something I want to put more detail into, it's going to be seen and exposed more. So we're going to start with a very basic seat here and just what you can do to add just a little bit extra detail inside of your model. This is a really simple thing to do. It adds a lot of detail and a lot of character to the inside of the cockpit. For this one here, we're gonna go through a bunch of steps. It's gonna be a bit more tedious. It's gonna be a bit more time consuming, but the results in the end are well worth it. So I hope you guys can follow along with me on this. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Let's get started. All right, here's my little 70 second scale seat mounted on some plasticine and an old uh, paint pot here so I can move it around and show it to you guys. And here I also have what is normally used for making seat belts, which is trusty and good old Tamiya tape. Now, I've used this on a few models in the past and I've just never really liked the result. I don't really like the way that it bends around the seat and doesn't really kind of seem like there's gravity folding it down. Um, it, you know it's okay to use I'm not saying don't use it if you prefer it it's especially easy to use and that's what's really nice about it you can paint over it and what's also really nice is especially now Tammy has this one millimeter version of it so you just have to cut some strips in it you don't even have to measure it up and basically you have this one millimeter tape you throw it on here and you're done but what I like to use instead is this and this is aluminum tape so this is exactly as it sounds, it's metal tape and it is not the nicest stuff to cut through, uh, but it does make the nicest results I think. So I wouldn't even say go ahead and buy some of this stuff, I would actually just say go find somebody that has some of this stuff. Um, I had a strip only about this big and this is it four years later. So you're really not going to use a lot of this stuff because um, the roll that it came in is really big and I could use this for three lifetimes and I wouldn't even be through half of that roll if I kept on modeling. So yeah, just go find it from somebody else because you're really not going to need a lot of it. So what I am going to do here is I put it on my trusty cutting glass here. There's a little square of it here. And this just makes it easier for me to cut this stuff. You can cut it on a cutting mat, don't worry about that. It's a little trickier. And what I've also gone ahead and done is this stuff, as I mentioned, is really hard to cut through. It will dull a new hobby knife in seconds. So I actually have one here that is already dull and I don't mind cutting it up and getting it a little beat up. I've got my compass tool here and I'm just going to make it pointy for the size of the belts that I want. There we go, that ought to do it. And I can go, oops, simply like this. There we go, I've got my mark for my seat belt. And I am so sorry about the glare, everyone. Let me try and zoom in on this. There we go, hopefully that'll do better. This is really hard to record, so I do apologize for that. There we go, that cut through it right away. And it curled up there, that's normal. Alright, so now that I've got my belts cut out, and you might need two, you might need three, you might need four, whatever. One of the last steps that I like to do is, because these are all square, 
I like to just take my knife and just cut little corners out of them. There we go. Make them a little pointy as if they were belt buckles. this one it's always a problem when I do a demonstration video it works better when I'm not demonstrating okay there we go quite liking the look of that so now it's time to transfer these to the seat. Now, the one thing I should mention too, I make these longer than they should be, and that serves two purposes. Number one, you can always cut them short when you're done, but when you leave them longer like this, it's a lot easier to handle them, and it's it, it just makes life a lot easier for you when you're modeling. Um, if you lose the tack of the, the seat belts here, they're really easy to just glue in place with a little bit of super glue. Like, literally a little bit. You don't need a lot. Uh, they will fall down quite quickly and into the into the seat. So, yeah, be very be very careful when you're using extra super glue with these, but you shouldn't need it. They're usually pretty they're usually pretty sticky and they I, I rarely ever have to super glue these down unless it's in a slightly bigger scale. Uh, but for 72nd, I usually don't have problems with that. So let me go get set up here and we'll put these into the seat and see how they look. Okay, so generally I start with the side belts here. And yeah, what's just really nice about this. Oops. I'm gonna run into problems already. Is you just get them to stick down. I need a different tool here. I think this will work better. And then just wrap it around. Like that. And you can see, versus Tamiya tape, it just folds nice and it has these really nice wrinkles in it. There's a nice pattern in it. It just adds, just adds more character to the subject. And look how thin that is. That's so, so thin. I just find it to be so much more to scale than using uh, Tamiya tape. And I should also mention, you can go ahead and paint these beforehand, but I prefer to do this all after. It makes, I think it's a little easier to do this after. So that one will fit in there. Maybe I'll bend it over so you can see the two. Oops, sorry. This is a little more tricky for me to demonstrate at this scale. So yeah, I usually do these two first and then I can drape them, the other two, over the shoulder, and it'll sometimes they rest on here, and then I don't have to worry about these. It just makes it a little easier in the years that I've I've done this. But for now, I'll just put these here. Oop, I'm running into problems here. There we go. Just flip around the back like that. And since this goes up right against a bulkhead, I'm not worried about, you know, trimming and, and, and cleaning that area. It's, it's going to sit there quite nicely. You're not going to see any of that. Okay, 
Oops. Not quite. This one's a little lower than it should be. There we go. So hopefully that got that all was caught on camera. But that's a basic seat belt from me. This is just something I like to do um, because again, it's so simple. Like this, this whole process. If I wasn't talking so much, would have taken me less than five minutes to do this. It's it's so easy to just add this nice detail. And again, I just love how how flatter it is than Tamiya tape. It really, really looks more to scale. And what's really nice is it's sticky. And you can see like these folds in here that it just adds a little extra character detail to the model um, and to the subject. So, you know, generally 70 second scale, you're just peering in through a window. Um, like I said, it doesn't have buckles. It doesn't have all this extra detail in it. It's just got these pointed edges on here. Um, and you know, I'll paint those, I usually paint those silver and, uh, yeah, it just, I think this is just such a simple, easy way to add a little extra detail in the cockpit. So now that we're done with the smaller scale, we're going to move up to 48 scale. So for 48 scale models. Generally, if it's something like a Tamiya kit, there might be a set of decals that you can apply. And those are not my favorite because they're very flat and they lack texture and detail, especially around the buckles. Um, you might have something like an Edward kit here and you'll get some uh, pre-painted seat belts in here. You might have some from a company like Ryan, Lion Roar or even Edward that are, are unpainted and you can go paint them up yourself. Um, I generally don't really like photo etch seat belts that much and the reason again is they just don't to me they don't look the realist and when I look at like these ones in here and some of the stuff that like I can see is th they're very dotty they, they're printed with this all these little dots in them I, I'm not a big fan of that and usually when this happens I just paint over it anyway so it's not that big a deal but what is really frustrating for me is when I get these done up like this and I want them bent and warped around especially like these two need to be bent the paint will peel and that's really really frustrating you know I can go ahead and kneel these and that'll make the metal softer but I, I prefer once again, simply to use aluminum tape here and build my own because they just, they look a lot nicer, I think, and they just have a lot more character to them. So what I'm going to be doing here is I've got some more aluminum tape here, this time a bigger patch of it, and I'm going to cut this up into a bunch of strips. What's important though is if you have something like the decals or the photo etch metal here, keep these as a reference guide because this is how big they should be. These are already to scale, so it's gonna tell me how big I need to make all the buckles and everything and where everything needs to go so that it's a proper and accurate fit. So I don't discredit these, don't get me wrong. I keep, I, this, this set here is gonna be kept as a reference for future 109 builds that I might have in the future so I can go back and copy these. So I have aluminum tape. The other thing I'm going to be using here is magnet wire. Now this is a giant spool of this stuff and it only costs about five bucks and that was with free shipping out of China. Magnet wire is used for very, very tiny electronics and for lighting up your models and stuff. And basically this red stuff, you, you scrape it off and this is just a coating put over it. Um, so that you can you can get really fine wire into really really tight details that need electricity so i don't really use it for that what i use it for is for bending up because it's so super thin it's basically to scale but i can bend it up really easy and i can make myself some really nice looking seat belt harnesses 
and uh, that's what I'm going to be doing with this. So, as before in 70 second scale, what I'm going to do first is measure out how big I need to make these belts. And it looks like I need to make quite a few for this one. I still have this little block here from our 70 second scale subjects. And what I'll do that is these will be these kind of oval shaped pads here. I'll make two of those. And uh, I think these are kind of in two sections here. One, two, three, four. That's kind of what it looks like there. Um, I think that's what I'll do for those. So again, make them long. Make them long so you have excess material you can you can get rid of. It's easier to throw away some material than it is to add on. But uh, yeah, let's get to it and make these belts. All right, I've got the tape cut out here. And what I think I'm gonna do first is make this half of the buckle, or the belt rather, with these buckles here on the front. So it's gonna be quite easy to do. We're just going to take some of the magnet wire, which I got here. And it always helps to have a few different types of tweezers to do this. But I like these um, self-clamping ones for, for doing stuff like this. Just makes life easier, most of the time. And yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and fold up some triangle shaped belts. And I have to make two of these, of course, and cut these down into shape. So I'm gonna go and take some time to make these a little more proper. And it's just, again, it's just all about taking the shape here. I'm gonna replicate this shape. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna replicate this shape out of magnet wire and this shape up here out of magnet wire. And uh, I'll have these two sections done in a matter of no time. Okay, inside here, there is one little seat belt buckle. Okay, and <clears throat> here it is on a belt already. And look at that. That looks quite nice. So all I did, and this was the hard part for me to record rather, not to do, although it is fussy, is you just take the um, tape, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a moment here, and I'm just going to basically bend it in half, almost so it folds over onto the back side, but not quite. And now the other hard part is picking these things up when you're done, because they like to jump around. All right, one second. <laughs> They're just so tiny. Okay, let's see if I can get this in the camera. So, flip this through. All the way down there at the end. I'm trying. Sorry, the camera's not wanting to focus on something this small right now. But you just fold the tape over itself there, like that. And there you go. That buckle is stuck. And doesn't that look nice? That's just little bit of wire taking time to bend it into a nice little triangle like that and uh, just folding the tape over quick little detail like that so what I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna make the other two the smaller ones and I will be back after that and we'll continue with more construction on these belts because we're not done yet there's still quite a bit to do um, I've mentioned this before this is a very tedious little process but it's worth it in the end for the uh, the results that you get of having these really nice looking belts uh, sitting in your in the cockpit okay so here are the bottom buckles right here oops sorry gang so there's the bottom buckles and then over here 
are the top ones that'll be mounted to the uh, just behind the seat there. So what I want to do now, I want to replicate. Come on, camera, you can do it. I want to replicate these metal parts here, and these are going to be glued onto the tape and then they will stick onto these sections here so these are these will be two pieces these will be two pieces attached to these two and then the bottom ones will fit on top of here like that so to make those i'm going to be using some very thin styrene sheet you can see just how flexible this stuff is this is just scrap stuff i keep around um, specifically for building things like this. So the first thing I want to do is get out my compass and measure about how wide it needs to be. Now the thing I like to do, you can use metal if you like, if you want to, if you want to do that. Um, but the thing I like about using styrene is it's a lot easier to use than like brass or any other kind of, you know, even like this, the steel here, you could use this on the sides and um, cut and file that down. But I find that this works a lot easier and it has just mostly the same effect. And so what I'm going to be doing here is cutting out more than I need. Okay. There's a reason behind the madness, which will be revealed in just a moment. So let me just cut this section out. Okay. And the reason for this is I have a nice little strip like this and it gives me something to hold on to when I'm sanding, when I'm cutting, um, I can I can go like this so you know what I want to do now is just take some sandpaper oh, these are not the right tweezers for this they've lost their flat grip unfortunately uh, I'll use them anyways for the sake of time and so what I'm gonna go and do here is yeah round this off like that and so I need to make it a lot more curved, almost like this shape here. It needs to be curved like that. And then what I'm going to do is once I get that, that nice profile that I'm happy with, I'm gonna sand it down thinner this way so it keeps more in character at the scale. So sand it down thinner this way. And then I have all this excess styrene in the back here. I can simply just cut it off where I need it to be glue it onto the bottom of the uh, tape and I'm done this is really easy to do but it's difficult to show because it's so tiny and so delicate so I apologize so much for this like I really want to show this how I do all this stuff but it's it's very hard for me to show it properly so yeah it's just all about rounding it out here and trying to make them as symmetrical as possible, which is really hard to do with the wire. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, you can see little bits of wire around the desk here from a few trial and errors. And uh, yeah, that's actually normal. I don't just make one seat belt and get the hook looking right. There's often times where I'll make one or two and find the correct process on how to do this. And then I'll go ahead and and make the two proper ones but what I what I usually do is I won't just make this little buckle here and glue it to the belt I'll make the two make sure they're identical as much as I can and then glue them down so enough of me yammering I'm gonna go and make these two and then uh, like I said measure I'll measure out how the distance from well, here to here, I'll measure out this distance, cut it to shape, and uh, then glue that buckle right here onto the underside. So, let's go and do that. 
Okay, I'm pleased to say I've been at this for quite a while now. I've got all those belts built there on that side, and the way over here, uh, these are the ones that would go around your waist. So I got those done, and they're drying right now. So what I'm going to do is finish building these ones here really quickly, and I'm going to let the super glue take its time to dry. And once that's done, then I can properly install these into their uh, into the seat. So I'm just going to add a little glue there. I'll do these one at a time, simply because I don't want to have the glue dry out. So yeah, I like this Gorilla Glue, but it just it takes a little while to set. Okay, so there's one, let's do two, and straight okay that's about it now I want to make just one thing clear when I'm when I'm doing this presentation I happen to be building a Luftwaffe aircraft uh, in, in a 109 and this this video isn't and uh, hopefully this hasn't come across but it's designed solely for how to build a 109 and how to build all the buckles and every little detail that you're going to run into when you're building seat belts. Like when I did the uh, uh, T6 Harvard, uh, there's specific belts that the that the uh, buckles rather that the U.S. uses that are different from the German ones, and I built those out of this very thin styrene. I cut them out of here, and I actually used a lot more styrene on that one than I did wire. Uh, and so for whatever project you're working on it, it's going to vary differently um, from project to project so I, I'm hoping people watching this aren't taking this as just solely as you know this is how you make Luftwaffe uh, seat belts and one day I'm gonna make an RAF and then one day I'm gonna make a USAF and a Japanese and so on and so on it varies from project to project I'm just more or less showing you in this video the general process that I go through when I'm building these. So I'm, I'm hoping that that part comes across uh, properly in this video. So didn't want to confuse anyone with that. So I, like I said, I'm just going to leave these to dry properly. I want to let all the glue dry, especially on these side ones here. There's a lot of little details that I built in there and I want to let these parts here dry. Once they're dry and they've dried out properly, I'll, I'll be more comfortable handling them and we will put them into this little uh, cockpit floor and sidewall here with the seat and we will be very close to being done. Okay, I am really excited because I'm very close to being done and I'm going to start installing the seat belts here. Now, I kind of like to work a bit in reverse and that is I will put the glue down on the center part of the buckle here like this well the one end I should say not the center but uh, I'm gonna put it down on there and I'm just gonna bend this out different there we go that's better and I think I need to hold it differently and I'm just going to set this one down at about here now whoops that's not what I wanted to have happen. <laughs> Perfect. I had to get stuck to my finger. Uh, I wasn't careful enough there. So I like to work a little bit backwards like this and put this down and then have it fold over the sides 
rather than I've seen instructions that tell you to put it on the sides and fold them in. It just works, I find it just works easier when you do it this way. And yeah, then this will stick down nicely. Now, some people might say like, why didn't you do the sides of the seat here? Because you're not gonna see it. You know, it's just gonna be the tape folded down over that. You're, you're not gonna see in the cockpit on the side there. If it was a subject where you would see that, yeah, I would probably go ahead and do something else. But again, this is a 109. It's fairly narrow on the sides once that cockpit, uh, once the fuselage goes over it rather. So you're not really gonna see all of the stuff in there. So I'm not too concerned with uh, seeing or not seeing those, those side buckles. If you wanna go ahead and do that as an added detail, by all means, it's your project, it's your model. So I'm gonna go do the other one. Less glue this time. That's why it's always a bit more tricky to do this stuff on camera. So I'm gonna actually, where do I wanna do this? think let's put it here okay right there that looks nice happy with that so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll fold these down and do the other ones here in a moment all right everybody we are close very close to being done with this that's really really exciting so what I went ahead and did is I glued on the top buckles here because I wanted to show you something that I do to add uh, a bit of dimension and character to these belts because of that aluminum tape and what I do is I take my pointed tweezers here and I basically grab them and twist and roll it around like this and it creates these nice folds. You just go like that. It just it creates these nice folds in the in the in the tape, and it just helps it look a little bit more flexible and a little bit more used. So they're not quite so uh, so rigid in there, not just sitting down straight. And it's just yeah, it's just something I really like to do, just to add some final little bits of detail in there and so I'm gonna be gluing them about here not, not quite enough glue a little bit right there in the middle and uh, let me I'm gonna spin this around so I can see where I'm going and uh, yeah just down that looks nice now let's do the other one okay this one I want to have a little crooked compared to the other belt there we go And so they're just not both identical and, and drooping down the same way. Okay. I kind of want to fold that in here. Like that. And then this one will sit in here like that. I think that looks pretty good. So there we have it. Our buckles, our belts rather, seat belts and buckles are in place. One last thing to do. Okay, I'm almost done with this build here, uh, at least for this video. And I'm gonna go through one of the final steps that I do after I've got everything 
in shape and in place and I'm ready to go. Now, I'll even do this step if I'm painting them on the glass. Sometimes I'll just keep these belts on the glass and it's easy, very easy to paint them on that, on that piece of glass and then I put them over the seats when I'm done. Um, which is something I did with the uh, T6 Harvard that was a few videos ago. And uh, it was quite easy because I could do a lot of detail painting, but I've also done this in the past where I'll put them down on here. And uh, so my final step is I put on a layer of Mr. Metal Primer. Uh, I've had this for years now and I've been using it for years. I bought this when I first built the Tamiya uh, 30 second scale Zero, the A6M2. And it's wonderful stuff, absolutely fantastic stuff. I've put this on and then I've painted and then I've been able to drape the seat belts over and it doesn't bend, it doesn't crack, it doesn't wrinkle, it's nothing. It's fantastic stuff. I, I use this stuff over anything metal, photo etched, aluminum, brass, doesn't matter what it is. And I, I put this on first and then I'll put on a layer of like Mr. Surfacer 1200 primer just because this stuff has a really great grip to it. Um, it's just easy, you just hand brush it on and uh, clean up is easy with some uh, lacquer thinner. Uh, it says here, or I have read rather, that this is, you can airbrush this on and it does come in an aerosol. However, mine is a, is a Japanese bottle completely I it so it might have airbrushing directions somewhere on here I don't know so I don't know how to thin it for airbrushing don't ask me for that please <laughs> so all I do is I just hand paint it on here and um, even with these little ones here in 70 second scale I'll paint that on really really quickly and it dries it dries fairly quick within half an hour it's ready to go and you can keep going at painting some more and uh, yeah speaking of painting that's kind of the last step of, uh, out of all this. So how I paint my belts, um, in particular in 72nd scale, is I use a combination of a few paints. It's really simple. It works really, really well, a lot better than you think. And that is I use Vallejo Game Color Elfic Flesh. This is a nice beigey, white, creamy color. And it matches a lot of seat belts that I've seen in aircraft. Um, of course, it depends on the nationality and, and the time period and all that sort of thing. But this is great, great stuff. So I paint this on usually two layers, just again, hand brushing it on. Uh, one layer, let it dry. Second layer, let it dry. It's good to go. And to follow it up to add a little bit of distressing, because you don't really want something that obnoxious on there, I take some Citadel. Agrax Earthshade. This is a nice brown color and I'll mix it with a little bit of water so it's thinned down about 50-50 and then again I'll lightly go over and just paint a subtle wash over here and it's amazing how it brings out the details. It's super simple and easy to do and then one of the last things I'll do is just take some silver and paint on the you know front belt buckles that sort of thing. Um, just to add a little bit of final detail to the model here. So that's basically and generally my process when I'm when I'm painting these things, especially in 70 second scale. It's super quick to do and it just adds an excellent level of detail. And uh, yeah, this Elvic flush is it's just such a great color. It's such a perfect match for so many seatbelts. It's kind of scary. So all right, everybody, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and slugging your way through this whole video. I hope it turned out. This was a very difficult one to record, so I'm really crossing my fingers that everything turned out for the best. If not, I'll possibly do this video again on a uh, when I get a better camera, whatever day in the future that is. But uh, as it goes for now, this is it. This is what I tend to do a lot with with my models. I just I love this look so much more than using photo etch metal and again I'm not trying to discredit anyone that uses it. I'm saying for my own personal um, satisfaction when I'm building I, I really enjoy this. It's a lot of trial and error. 
it's not something simple to do. This is the simple method to do. Um, it's not simple, but I find it really satisfying and rewarding when I look into a model and I see those seat belts that I made and I just, I really enjoy how they look. I, I enjoy the, the feel of them and the, the satisfaction of having built them myself. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work. Um, and you know, you can, you can apply this method to any scale in 32nd scale and 24th scale. Um, this aluminum tape works again really well. I would maybe consider doubling it, uh, doing two layers of it, just to thicken it up a little, possibly even three, depending on the scale. But for 48 scale, this works really well. It, it, it really shines and it pops out quite a bit, which is what I was wanting. And for 72nd scale, it just adds a little bit of detail to have these stripes on there, these, these, these nice aluminum stripes, and they look great. And once it's primed and painted, it'll look even better. And you look inside the cockpit and you can see all those details in there. And it, it's, again, like I said, it's really satisfying. It's uh, it's a lot of work to do. This was, <laughs> this was quite a bit of work. And now it's kind of the end of the day, waiting for paint to dry and all that sort of thing. Or rather, glue to dry, sorry. But uh, now I'm excited because I can go ahead. I can, I can prime this. I can start painting the interior and putting all the other little details around there. And if you want to see all of that happening, that'll be in the build video for this particular 109, whenever that comes out. I don't know when that'll be. It might already be out by the time you're watching this video. But uh, that's it. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. And again, I'd just like to thank you all for watching and I hope you will consider this method. I hope this has been helpful for you. And, um, let me know if you have any success with this or if you have any questions about this and um, I'll try my best to answer them as quickly as I can. So thanks guys and everyone for watching. This is Rubs of Cloud 9. I'll see you all later.